So, Morbius is an interesting movie, and it's something I've been wanting to discuss for a long time. I remember when the film first hit theaters, I was pretty lukewarm on the whole affair, to say the least. I was too busy losing my mind at how good Spy Family was, and here comes Sony being like, Hey guys, our vampire movie's pretty cool. You know Michael Morbius, right? Buddy, if I wanted vampires named Michael, I'd play Melty Blood. But then I started to see a lot of buzz about Morbius online. Everyone was really talking this up as one of the greats, saying that it wasn't your average superhero romp. So I decided, you know what? Okay, I'll bite. And so I bought the movie on the Google Play Store, since you know I needed to morb in full 4K, and watched it with a few close friends. And I have to say, I was shocked. This was not the drab, generic, focus-tested adaptation of a cape flick that I thought it was gonna be. If anything, after I was done with the film's one hour and 44 minute runtime, I, I was a changed man. This film embodies everything that's great, not only about superhero movies, but frankly, film and art as a whole. It's something that I think more people should be talking about. I'm Red Muffler Man, and today, fellow Morbheads, we'll be tackling just that. Morbius, the living vampire. He's been a mainstay in Marvel Comics for decades, having made his first appearance in Spider-Man 101 in 1971. Since then, he's made multiple on and off appearances, and while initially being portrayed as a villain, quickly found a place in the pantheon of Marvel as a relatable anti-hero. He was simply a sick man who wanted nothing more than a cure to the rare disease that ailed him, and through his desperation, found a cure that was anything but. Jared Leto takes the pained character of Dr. Michael Morbius and plays it to an absolute masterclass level. He portrays the character with a solemn anguish, a man pushing away his colleagues and close friends and going to extreme lengths to cling to even the smallest fragment of hope he can muster. Hope is generally a strong theme found in the film, and no character represents the message of hope better than Michael Morbius' close friend, Milo, played by the English heartthrob, Matt Smith. In one of Michael's darkest hours during his adolescence, as he had given up and was willing to let the nihilism of his situation take hold, there was Milo, someone just like him, with the same rare blood disease. It's honestly touching seeing the two boys share a moment, to reassure themselves that while the world may be a dark, unforgiving place, at least when they were together, there was hope. But as time passes and Michael makes breakthrough after breakthrough, he still can't find the one solution to the problem that is the time limit on his life. And slowly the walls come closing in, closer and closer and closer. Eventually that same hope that pushed him to keep going in the first place becomes twisted and distorted, and forces the young man into a dark place he had no intention of ever going. Having taken a horde of vampire bats from Costa Rica, Michael takes one final gambit to take on his disease, the Morb Serum. Short for Miraculous Obfuscation Replacement Blood, it would allow him to take all of the recessive disease-ridden cells in his body and replace them with the dominant red blood cells found within the body of the vampire bats, known for their resilience against various diseases like rabies. With one final chance at attaining a life free of the ever-looming presence of death, Dr. Michael Morbius injects himself with the serum whilst on board a freight ship. And at first, everything appears to be a rousing success. Michael is able to walk on his own properly. His strength, speed, and senses are downright superhuman. He's the best he's felt in his entire life. But then, something strange begins happening. He begins to see red, and he is overcome with insatiable bloodlust. Dr. Michael Morbius at this moment has lost his humanity. Breaking free from his restraints, Morbius attacks and kills everyone aboard the ship, sans his partner, Dr. Martine Boncroft, draining them of all of their blood. This scene is a violent, bloody spectacle. The entirety of the scene is veiled in a pitch black, whereas previous scenes were bright and vibrant to show some element of hope in this ordeal. Now there's only the darkness of despair leaving even the viewer in both the literal and figurative dark, as they must quickly attempt to parse the acts of vampire-based carnage and violence that Morbius is morbing on his prey. And like a fever dream, as quickly as the outburst of bloody murder violence begins, so too does it end. Dr. Michael Morbius now coming to the realization that within him lies a dormant beast that he has no hope of reigning in, as he deals with the impending duality of Morbius the man and Morbius the monster. This theme of duality and the intertwined themes of hope and despair are further intertwined in the narrative of Morbius. As the movie progresses, they go only further into the twisting yin and yang that is the tale of the tragic doctor as we are reintroduced to Milo. Milo, 
after having been denied the cure for Michael, who sees his new abilities as a curse, steals the vial of the Morb Serum for himself. Milo, unlike Michael Morbius, doesn't see the vampiric urges as a curse. He sees them as a ticket to freedom, to live the life he feels he had been robbed of by the powers on high. Matt Smith does an incredible job of portraying the unhinged freedom of Milo with this incredibly playful spirit. It's funny how they got Jared Leto to play the Joker when Matt Smith was literally right there. Like, come on, give Matt Smith the damage tattoo and let him go, Warner Brothers. Well, let him at it once your merger with Discovery stops setting everything on fire. But I digress. By this point of the movie, I was entertained, but it wasn't exactly anything new to me. I thought at this point, maybe the 16% on Rotten Tomatoes was right, and maybe people were just pulling my leg on this. Then something changed. Something I never would have expected in a movie like Morbius. The scene begins with Morbius' escape from law enforcement, having just discovered Milo's theft of the Morb Serum, going to confront his old friend. Milo, flaunting his new powers, refuses to give up his new lease on life, as he effortlessly defeats Michael Morbius. At this point, Milo has fully embraced his vampiric abilities, while Michael fights desperately to hold on to what little humanity he has left. Then, as Milo is about to strike a finishing blow, there is a quiet, a stillness one could only perceive when they were moving around at the speed of sound. In that brief moment, Milo is blasted away by a surge of energy. Morbius, on his knees, looks up at the outstretched hand of his savior and sees none other than Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh. At this point, my friends and I began losing our sh**. We knew this movie had become a meme, but we thought it was from a place of irony, but we had no idea that we were about to experience peak cinema. From here, Morbius, using the power of one of the Chaos Emeralds, gains the power of flight, and together he and Sonic manage to escape Milo. Sonic then takes Morbius to his underground base, and the two formally introduce themselves. Sonic explains that he'd been transported to this dimension alongside his friend Knuckles by the insidious Dr. Robotnik. At that moment, Morbius remembers that Robotnik was one of his research mates from his university days, someone whom he had confided much of his research. It turns out Milo had not stolen the Morb Serum from him, but that Robotnik had reverse-engineered the serum, boosting its effects using the power of the Chaos Emeralds. Having a common enemy, Morbius and Sonic join forces in order to stop both Milo and Dr. Robotnik, and to get Sonic and Knuckles back safely to their world. However, as time progresses, Sonic and Morbius can't track down Milo or Robotnik. The two spend days tracking their movements, finding only bodies in their wake. Meanwhile, Morbius's vampiric instincts only grow more insatiable by the day, as the artificial blood used to sustain him grows less effective by the hour. Then, during their investigation, Sonic catches a glimpse of Knuckles and gives chase. And as this happens, Morbius, unaware of Sonic's actions, receives a mysterious phone call. Hello, Dr. Michael Morbius. Dr. Ivan Robotnik. Or is it Eggman these days? Robotnik calls, taunting the young anti-hero. How he's kidnapped not only Sonic, but his beloved Martine. And should he wish to see them in one piece, that he must hand over the final Chaos Emerald by midnight tonight. Morbius makes a mad dash to downtown New York, where he is greeted by both Milo and Robotnik. Sonic and Martine both restrained. Morbius begrudgingly hands over the final Chaos Emerald to ensure their safety. Robotnik and Milo, however, had other plans. With the seven emeralds in hand, Milo fatally wounds both Martine and Sonic, throwing their bodies to Morbius' feet. In a blind rage, Morbius attacks Milo. But now, as he has received the power of the Chaos Emeralds, Super Milo easily disposes of Morbius and the powerless Chaos Emeralds leaving with Robotnik to wreak havoc on an unsuspecting world. Morbius has been defeated, with his only allies dying mere inches from his reach. Martine reaches out to him, begging him to drink her blood, to fully embrace the beast within, to do what he must to stop Milo. With tears in his eyes, he drinks her blood, and as he screams in despair, the powerless emeralds begin to react. Milo had only taken the negative power of the Emeralds, but not the positive. And as the Emeralds gather around Morbius and Sonic, the pure Morb energy from Michael's body begins to flow all around, gifting Sonic the same vampiric abilities as he is reborn as Supersonic Morbius. 
the two confront Milo and Robotnik with their newfound strength, in which Robotnik reveals his final trump card. Knuckles, who had been turned by the serum and who has fully embraced the red, but filled with the burning justice to take down Robotnik, Super Milo, and Knuckles, Morbius and Sonic unleash their true power and charge! It's Morbin time! The battle is long and hard fought, but eventually, Sonic and Morbius are the victors, with Milo having been stripped of his abilities using the positive energy of the Emeralds and leaving him to die of his illness, while Knuckles breaks Robotnik's brainwashing, and together he and Sonic take down their longtime adversary as brothers in arms. With the battle over, Sonic and Knuckles use the power of the Emeralds to return to their original forms, purging themselves of the essence of Morb. Morbius, however, when given the chance to return to being human, refuses them that he has become the avatar of the Morb, and must learn to control its wrath from within. Now at this point, I didn't think this film could get any better, honestly. But then we hit the post credit scene, which apparently, this scene wasn't in the theatrical cut. So maybe that could have led to the movie's negative reception upon release, since it very cleanly ties the narrative together. We cut to the scene. Morbius and Sonic are alone on the outskirts of New York, having been called by a mysterious unnamed man. They speak to one another briefly, wondering what's going on when they hear a voice. Eh, what's up, Dak? Morbius turns and is greeted by Bugs Bunny, and to his sides are both LeBron James and Son Goku. Bugs then explains that the multiverse has been torn asunder, which has led to the return of the multiversal Monstars. And in order to defeat them, Bugs and LeBron have been gathering the universe's strongest warriors, which has led them directly to Dr. Michael Morbius. God! I, I'm so excited for what we're gonna get in Morbius 2, because this is just the tip of the iceberg, man. Like, I don't think they can do any better than this. I don't think any other movie can do better than this at this point. Like, I'm done. This is peak cinema. You can't do any better than this. I'm so confused why people are hating on this movie. I, I swear to God, we, we had to have seen two different movies. Like, what is happening? But that's enough out of me. If you like what we do, like, subscribe, and drop a comment. It really helps us out. And if you like me, you can find me on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube at Red Muffler Man. And yeah, I'm all morbed out, so uh, take it easy, everybody.